Hi guys, Sam right here and today I'll be showing you how to make stereoscopic photographs without using a 3D camera. So let's get right into it. Okay, so first off, when you go into your camera, change the shooting mode to continuous or burst, whichever your camera says, and also change the quality of your photos to raw because you want the highest quality coming out of these burst shots. And for the shutter speed, I like 200 to 250 depending on the light. Uh, it means the photos get taken as quick as possible, I don't get any blur from moving and it's very consistent so I like it so I suggest going for that shutter speed. Okay, now we've gone through all the camera settings, now let's go to the shots. So the way you produce this image is you hold down the shutter button and you move slightly to the right or left, like so. Taking the shots requires a steady hand as you're taking four consecutive photos at separate times, but you still want to capture a still image. So I suggest getting as many four shot bursts in as possible until you feel comfortable with the result. So here it is again from another angle. And with these photos, we will be taking them upstairs and I will show you how to put them all together in Photoshop. So let's go. Okay, so now we're back at the computer. The first thing you want to do is you want to go onto your file explorer and find all of the photos that you took on your SD card. So here are all of my photos. What I'm going to do is uh, show you actually before I do that, I will create a new folder on the desktop and just call it tutorial. There we go. It's always best to take the photos off or just make a copy of them and put them on your hard drive just in case anything disconnects while you're doing this and it's it's really frustrating and it's also just convenient because you can just easily wipe your drives if you need to okay now that's all done let's go let's close out of this folder and let's open the tutorial one and the first thing to do is always go through your photos so see this is the first burst i did so just go what one two three so that's the four and you can see that i've slightly tilted upwards so this burst i'm just going to delete that uh, so for the next one we got one two three four see this one is probably going to be the one that i use it says consistent motion so we'll probably use this one so what i'll do now is just launch up photoshop i mean you can go through all of these you can look at them very closely and you can also just mess with ones that are, that aren't working that well I and mean, you know I'm not stopping you but for the best for the best results you want to have something that looks smooth from just looking through the gallery okay and then go file to new S -A -B -S. and what I do is I put 1080 by 1320 because it'll be phone quality so if you want to upload these to Instagram this is probably the best way if not you know just create your own size and preset so let's click create here and what I'm going to do is go into file open and let's find that folder on the desktop so there we go tutorial and it was these four shots here so let's open those so what we'll do is we'll open them up all on camera raw here. So they'll set them up in a film strip. So what you can do is shift click them all and you can adjust the exposure accordingly. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw on this random preset, see if that looks good. No, it looks awful. Um, yeah, you can just play around with this. I'll just ch change the exposure a little bit, add a little bit of clarity, bring down the highlights and the vibrance and saturation of it. And there we go. So we'll open the four images. As you can see on the right, I've, uh, I've already done this with most of my projects here. So we'll wait for all of these to load. Okay, so now that all of those are opened, let's go to, because this is the fourth image of the shot. So let's double click it, name it four, and drag it over into your library. 
this is the way that I do it because it makes life a lot easier. I mean, you can always just drag them over onto one document, but this is the way that I do it. Name this two and name this one one. So there we go. So they're all now dragged up in here. So you can just close all of the documents. And on your library on the right hand side, you want to left click the first one, shift left click to the fourth one and drag them down into your layers and press enter four times and all of the photos will be placed there. Okay, so what you want to do first is go down to your layers, uncheck the four and the three frame and have the two frame at the opacity of about 50 or 55 so you can see what you're doing. Okay, so now I've free transformed the layer number two and what I'm going to do is just zoom in on it and match the Buddha head with the photo number one, like so. so there you go, so that looks good enough. So what I'm going to do is raise the opacity to 100 and go over to shot number three and bring down the opacity again. And you can see from when you bring down the opacity how far off your shot was, which would determine the movement in the background, not really the foreground. So there we go. So there's that one done, 100. And the fourth one, let's bring it down. And there we go. So is that done. And don't forget to bring the opacity up to 100 on that one too. So we can delete the background layer. Uh, let's do that. Okay, so now that you have all of your frames down the side all lined up, what you want to do is go onto the window tab on the top and select timeline. And what that do is just pop up this animation down here. So what you want to do is have it tick to create frame animation and click create frame animation. So what we'll do is bring up one frame. So this is what the first frame should see. And it should only be camera one selected in the bottom right here. All four, all three others should be unticked. And what you can do is just change the time. I like 0 0.09 and then duplicate the frame, put frame two in, duplicate, put frame three, duplicate, put frame four, and then go back on yourself. So three, and then two, but don't go back to one because it will instantly loop like so, where I'll show you now and put it on forever. So you can see it slightly moves. But on here, you don't really, you don't want all of these white bits on the side. So what I'll do is I'll just go to this frame, crop, crop all of this out. Try and keep it as much of the sides in as possible because you want this to be center of frame. There you go, it's about close enough. And there we go, and then click enter. And what this will do is it will crop every single layer. And what you want to watch out for is just watch it back again a couple of times and just see what size show up. So there you go, so it's just down the bottom here. Just need to bring up just a slight bit. And that should do the trick. So I'll press enter there. And there we go. You got your moving image. So what I like to do is just save this project here. So I'll just save as, and I'll type it tutorial. And save that, maximize compatibility, yeah. Okay, now that you saved everything, what you wanna do is now render it as a GIF file. So what you do is go to file again. Oh, if it lets me, there we go. Now you go file, export, and then save for web in brackets, legacy. There we go, and then we click save. So all of this should be, yeah, before I save it, uh, it should be GIF selective. This should usually just be fine. There's transparency dither. You can just take a look at this and uh, yeah, just copy it. But you can mess around with these settings. I haven't really messed around with them much because I usually render these as videos, which I'll tell you how to do after this. So do save. So let's go to desktop, let's go to that tutorial and I'll save it in there. So there we go. 
So that's rendered as a GIF file. We'll, we'll take a look in our tutorial folder and there it is. And there we go. You can see it's a GIF format right here. But when you render it as a GIF, if you look closely, uh, you can see a little bit of a downscale and sort of grittiness on the uh, statue itself. But that's not much to worry about as GIFs usually get compressed anyway. So we'll go back to Photoshop and for video, uh, rendering it as an MP4, uh, the first thing you want to do, especially if you want to put it on Instagram, where it's probably the best place to have these as videos, is uh, you duplicate all of your frames on your timeline. So select the first frame, shift click and go all the way over to the sixth frame and just keep pressing this little page right here, this little empty page next to the delete button and it will just duplicate the frames. And there we go, just take that up to about 42 to 48, it's usually the best because you're doing 0.9 second a frame and then that brings it above the 3 second minimum video limit for Instagram. So there you go, so then you file, export and then you render video. So my video settings for this are H.264 format, Adobe Media Encoder, um, the preset HD 1080p 2997. Um, but then always click the document size unless you want the specific output file to be 1920 by 1080, which is what 1080p will do. Uh, aspect document 1.0, uh, no color management, range all frames. Yeah. And, and yeah, the folder where you put it in, let's put it in this one. Totally forgot about that. My bad. And there you go. And click render come up with the export and video it shouldn't take a couple of seconds and there we go we're done so we'll just take a look at that and there you go so there's the video there and to get it on your phone you can email it to yourself I'll link a video down in the description with some other people with tutorials on how to uh, send videos to yourself as a I'm focusing this one on just the 3d photos itself so yeah, if you enjoyed the video, uh, put, put a like, a comment. I'm pretty bad at these tutorial things. This is the first time I've done them, so yeah. And um, yeah, go follow all my socials. They'll all be down in the description, or I'll put them up on the screen. You know, be super edgy like that. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you learned something today. All right, peace.